Hello and welcome to the Pig and Whistle Tales from Azeroth. As always here at the Pig and Whistle Inn in Stormwind, I go for a variety of subjects with regards to World of Warcraft. So grab a bottle or a pint, sit back and enjoy. This week we're going to be going over hot takes in WoW and I'm going to be going over, and this is my statement by the way, classic is easier than retail. Now I do have stuff to back this up and I will give my reasoning of course and <clears throat> excuse me but this is very much my opinion this is not a factual statement i do want to put that out now it is very much my own opinion and these are going to be the reasons that i back it up essentially but it's going to be something that i do every now and again um these sort of hot takes and maybe unfavorable takes i guess is the way to say it um, this one is a bit more favourable, but there's uh, some really wacky ones that I can't think of at the top of my head, but probably, I don't know, like Mage is the best class in the game or something like Warrior is the best class, you know, something stupid like that. That's sort of a real hot take that not many people will agree with. Again, I'm not saying that, that is just an example. But we will start off with the weekly news, as always. We have the world boss for this week is located in the bottom right of Onaran Plains, and that is Strunran. Strunran. I'm going to say that twice. I'm not going to completely uh, butcher it and say it 200 times like I always do. The Battleground event, or the bonus event for this week, is Battlegrounds. So you gain more honor when competing in Battlegrounds, 50%. And if you are Alliance that is a bit lower populated and in the war mode, you will get an extra addition to this. I think any Alliance player actually gets it when you go into a Battleground. So you get an additional 50% onto that. So 100% in total for Alliance. Gravity Lapse is your brawl for this week. Gravity Lapse being Eye of the Storm only. Essentially every 20 to 30 seconds you get flung up in the air and you can relocate yourself very quickly with the speed boost that you get while flying. Raging, storming, tyrannical and uh, thundering. I put storming down as or twice. That's why I kind of stuttered there. Um, That is definitely not what the seasonal affix is. The Raging, Storming, Tyrannical and Thundering are your Mythic fixes for this week. Raging is a simple, when they get below 30%, their damage is increased by 100%, so kite it, kill it quickly or soothe it. Storming, there'll be these little cyclones that fly around, just move out of the way, melee. They're, they're going to do a little bit of damage, knock you up, and it's going to be quite annoying. Tyrannical, the bosses and the mobs that they spawn have a bit more health, so make sure you bring a talent build f to deal with that. And Thundering is the seasonal affix. Everyone in your group gets a debuff, negative or positive, which increases your damage done. Before this debuff expires, you need to cleanse it by running into someone that has an opposite charge of you. So very simple, otherwise you will be stunned and most likely killed. Lava Burst is the spell that we're going to be looking at um, this week. And uh, it's one that's fairly newer to the game, but... Looking at it, it's had a lot of changes in like only a few expansions. So Wrath of the Lich King is when it was introduced. Uh, this ability no longer ever consumes a flame shock debuff off the target. Uh, can no longer deal critical damage to targets who are immune to crit critical strikes, such as Rora Sacrifice from Hunters and Blessed Radiance from Paladins. Whenever the victim you... And that is whenever you are a victim of an attack equal to damage greater than 10% of your health or critically hit by a non-periodic damage, uh, you gain Blessed Resilience, increasing all healing received by 15-30%. Okay, that is definitely not um, the Wrath of the Lich King talent. So, yeah, I would imagine it makes you immune to being crit again for a couple seconds. Uh, in Wrath of Lich King. It got its first uh, first real changes in Missa Pandaria. It had four of them in total. Starting off in 2012 in August. Now an elemental and restoration specialization ability only. Okay, so they took it away from Enhance. Base damage has been reduced by 33%, but now always deals a critical strike when cast on targets affected by Flame Shock. It all now deals 50% more damage. Okay, kind of weird way to put it. Um, the next change now has a two-second cast time, up from 
and deals 25% more damage. So it made it a big of a, a bit of a bursty spell. And Elemental Overload version of Lava Burst uh, should now properly deal 75% of the damage dealt by the Lava Burst that activated it, which makes sense. Several changes came in Warlord to Drain Orm. A couple of them are hot fixes. So now replaces Primal Strike for Elemental and Restoration Shamans. Makes sense. Primal Strike was kind of useless for them. Now costs 50% less mana. Lava Burst Elemental Resto now deals 33% more damage in PvP combat. Very good. Damage has been increased by 4%. Okay. And then it now deals 20% more damage while in PvP combat. So it clearly got a few buffs and love along the way. This is all within a year. Uh, all of them but changes. In Legion, it went through loads of different changes, loads of small like fixes. So I count seven here from quick, quickly looking at it. Damage increased by 76.5%. Flame Shock now causes it to be guaranteed of a critical hit instead of increasing damage. Okay. Lava Burst damage now increased by 5% for Elemental. Uh, Restoration Lava Burst should correctly deal a critical strike against targets with Flame Shock at level 20 or higher. Okay, very simple. These are very small hot fixes. Spell Power Coefficient. Coefficient increased to 275%, was 220. That's just a damage buff again, uh, based off of your spell power. Uh, fixed a bug causing Lava Burst and Lava Burst Overload to deal less damage than intended in PvP situations. That feels bad. Happens. And then damage increased by 6%. Over the course of its lifetime, it's never gotten a nerf. The only nerf was to the casting like time. But damage-wise, it's always just gone up and up and up. It's always gone up, I'm pretty sure. It got a small nerf like in Mists. But at the same time, it says it deals 50% more damage. And I suppose that's because it got a crit buff. So it's always critting. You know, I think that's just a net positive in total. And then the final change was in Battle for Azeroth. Mana generated reduced to 10 was 12. Very, very simple. Lava Burst is a very core element to Elemental Shaman specifically um in pvp pve combat you're just throwing out meatballs left right and center and it's absolutely amazing to see in all honesty so let's get on to the meat and bones of the episode classic is easier than retail i'm going to break this down into four sections leveling dungeons pvp and raiding leveling the only thing classic has for it is slow leveling it's a lot less like or it's a lot slower, but that doesn't make it harder. That's the thing. It just makes it more tedious at times because you get to a point in classic leveling where you kind of have quests all spread out. And for me, that part is anywhere between like level sort of 40 uh, or like level 39 and sort of 44, anywhere between there. Because when you hit 44, you go to Tenaris and Felwood, maybe after Tenaris, stuff like that, Feralis, them kind of places. But you can do quests in Strangathorn Vale, um, but that won't get you like a full two, three levels. That will get you about one, maybe, if you do all of the ones in Booty Bay, such as Acris by the Bundle or Bloodsail Buccaneers quests, them ones, the Gorilla ones, you know, all of them. That won't get you like three levels. That will get you one solid level. That's about it. And then you're sort of dotting about from place to place like Desolus or you're heading down to do a couple quests in maybe. Oh, God, I don't even know. You see, it's really awkward. It's just really awkward, like Hinterlands or something. Maybe you go there for a few quests, but you're trying to just grind mobs. And I get that that's the point of um, World of Warcraft Classic. You've got to grind mobs. The like blizzard wanted you to grind mobs back in the day it's not all just oh quest 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 no it's you have to be exploring the world and killing these mobs now this obviously doesn't make it tougher this makes it tedious on the other hand retail leveling is very simplistic and very quick easy and simple you're leveling very fast but that means that you've got a lot of content to do at max level you can go back and do the quest if that's what you want if you're really casual you can do that you can just chill make some gold that way because the quests do give you a lot of xp if you want to ex uh, explore the storylines that you missed out in these zones you're more than welcome to but 
This one is just very, you're quick at leveling, but at the same time, it's no challenge at all. The only challenge that Classic has is Elite Quests. But because we're in Wrath of the Lich King now, these Elite Quests aren't really that difficult anymore. I can solo them on a Rogue, on a Warrior even, like at this moment, because you have heirlooms and stuff like that. If you were to go back into Classic Era, Classic like Vanilla, when it released... I can solo stuff pretty much on my mage most of the time. Like, elite quests on a level 20 of mage with full white gear, you know, maybe one or two green items. You know, know, it's kind of crazy. Rogues in classic could just vanish if anything got tough. Like, you had evasion, you pop every cooldown and you try and burn it. Warriors were the only ones that really had it tough. But even then, you could pop retaliation, you have mana pots, you have... Uh, shield walls you have shield block which is 100 percent block chance so you're not taking any damage if you have a shield or sword and board there there was a lot of things that people could do in classic but people didn't utilize their kits properly when leveling you could do so many elite quests by yourself but people chose to group which is fine i'm, I'm not like shit on people for grouping obviously um But yeah, you could do the Elite Quests, most of them in Classic, by yourself. Dungeons? Again, I think they're very easy. I think, mechanically, dungeons in retail are a lot tougher than ones in Classic. And what I mean by this is just from from pure mechanics point of view. So, bosses, more mechanical, stuff like that. Whereas, if you look at full-on Classic, you know what, I'll compare it to... Okay, no, I will go through all of the classics, TBC, Wrath, and Vanilla Classic. I will be comparing it to all of them. If you look at Stratholm, what's the main boss at the end of Stratholm? Like, what does he do? He does a pulsating AoE, and I think a mortal strike. That's about it. He summons ghouls that die in one arcane explosion. Okay, that's fine. If you look at uh, Ruby Life Pools, You've got ads that spawn, which is fine, but at the same time, oh no, I, I really haven't done much dungeons in a uh, thingy. The one that I do remember is the last boss where it's loads of fire being spit on the ground. You've got two bosses to deal with rather than just one. Loads of fire, you're in a very tight sort of cramped area. The second to last boss in that same dungeon as well summons down a meteor. Uh, if you're in this, you basically die and you've got to get out of it within a couple seconds. But you're also having to utilize the platform that you've just cleared and sort of kite your way around in a big circle. So it's more mechanical and it can punish you in other things. This is only comparing it to like heroic as well. I'll compare heroic dungeons to uh, classic dungeons. I think that's the best comparison that I can give in this instance. Because if you go into mythic plus dungeons, some no, no, I'm sorry, but retail blows out of the water with that. That is like what separates classic and retail players in terms of how easy a dungeon is. If I look at Heroic Plus and I see that as barely a mythic dungeon in classic, like you can do, I've done mythics like every now and again. I'm not like a mythic god in like retail, but I'm decent. I'm a decent player and, you know, I'll do like if I can really... If I really want to, I'll push for like Keystone Master, that kind of thing. But I just, I, I don't enjoy the dungeon side. Um, if you look at Heroic Plus, every time I'm going for a Heroic Plus, you have very simple mechanics that people mess up. So, simple mechanic is simply, uh, if you look at Halls of Stone, Old or are them kind of raids, they the mobs have 190% increased health. But... If you're close to them, they have an aura that pulsates, giving you increased damage per stack, and this stacks indefinitely. But DPS, range DPS, do not go in stack, like behind the mobs. They just stand there, so they're doing pleb DPS, whereas I'm getting a stacking debuff. And it's so easy to see, and yet people don't understand. If you look at any of the dungeons, such as Gundrak or Draktharon Keep, you have a blood pool on the ground. Now, granted, this blood pool is annoying to see, but essentially you just move them out of the blood pool, otherwise it heals them. I've had tanks just stand there, 
just literally stand there and they get full healed and then they'll blame everyone and be like, you're not doing enough damage to kill through. And it's like, bro, he's healing for about 200 million per tick. What are we meant to do? We're just in Wrath of the Lich King. Like, it's crazy. And this is the difference because I think they will improve on the Heroic Plus. They'll add Olduar and they'll add different difficulties. They will put a Heroic Plus system in. But if you look at some of the pulls that could be done, people are pulling one mob in these instances. You can, if you are a decently geared group, pull two or three packs. If you understand the dungeon, you can do this. It really isn't that difficult. If you look at stuff in Nexus, where there's mirror images, again, a bit more difficult because the images need to be tab targeted and killed. But warriors or like tanks aren't doing that. Healers aren't doing that. No, they expect the DPS to do it when you've got a holy paladin that's just standing there. He's just standing there. All he's doing is ca casting Flash of Light. He's not doing anything else. He can go around melee these mirror images, meaning the DPS can do more damage to the actual mobs, meaning they die faster, meaning the run overall is 10, 15 minutes quicker. But no, he's just standing there because people don't understand that yet. They're not in that understanding of, oh, if I helped out, this will be quicker or I should be doing this job or like I can help out with this at the very least. But no, people in Classic aren't quite there yet with the Heroic Dungeon side which is fine, but again, they haven't learned. And it's a very simple mechanic that can be dealt with like a lot more efficiently, but people just don't. That's the thing. Um, Yeah, dungeons, I'd say, are very much easier in uh, Wrath of the Lich King, in Classic, in anything compared to retail dungeons, purely on the mechanics-wise and purely on the how effective people are in retail at clearing that kind of content compared to those in classic pvp it's so simple in wrath of the lich king compared to that of dragonfly it's actually not as enjoyable for me and this is the thing i have always remembered pvp and wrath of the lich king it's when i first started pvping it's when i first started getting into the game really and i enjoyed it so much i loved pvp i loved arenas it was absolutely amazing but as the games evolved i've become a lot more uh ooh, what's the word a quite equate equated equ equated you know what I mean, uh, to the very fast-paced nature of retail PvP. It's very much, okay, Intim stun into a trap on my healer. I'm going to start running because the Rhett's popped wings. I'm Warriors connecting to me to look to spear and pop his cooldowns. Let me shadow meld to maybe stop it. The storm bolt, that kind of thing. Whereas in Wrath PvP, it's very much, okay, I'm in stealth. I'm cloning this healer out of stealth. All right, I'm popping Starfall. Uh, he's moon fired and insect swarmed. Okay, now we wait for Starfall again. It's that kind of thing. Um, PvP is very much mana drain uh, in uh, Wrath as well, and it, it's just not enjoyable. It it feels so slow. It feels so lackluster, and that doesn't give me any sort of enjoyment or encouragement out of it. It seems so lethargic. Now, I get that this is obviously a lot more... Sorry, I just hit my uh, notepad. Um, <laughs> mainly due to the fact that when I talk, uh, I express. So my hands are constantly moving. Um, but yeah, it, I've, I've lost my train of thought now. I get that people enjoy this type of like PvP experience, but it feels so slow and I'm always on edge when it comes to PvP. I'm always like, okay, what's happening now? What's happening now? I'm trying to play like 10D chess, even though... The game is moving at a snail's pace compared to what I'm used to now. And I, again, I get it that people enjoy that. But I think that people in retail PvP, if they were to come over to Wrath of Lich King, they would beat them. Or they would have a very good chance at beating them because of how simplistic it is compared to retail. If you look at players that have gone there... Hydra, for one one example, he went from classic to or retail to classic, and he immediately just got like rank ones. I'm pretty sure, 
like it wasn't even tough for him um because it's so simple but there's other players that like have done this i think channel's one of them like there's multiple retail players who have gone there and just simply won and like gotten glad and that's it like most seasons um a lot of uh, classic players would be really struggling and really pushing but again classic players are good classic players are good in pvp and uh, pvp in world of warcraft in wrath is very simple so anyone can kind of grasp it quite easily with rogue i'm playing as a fucking assassination rogue something that you wouldn't play in pvp you might do but i'm not too sure but i've already figured out the like uh rotation for it cheap shot kidney shot this is on a warrior by the way cheap shot uh kidney shot and then uh, you sort of gouge after that then you go into a blind if you don't get the reset on your fucking uh thing or if they berserk a stance out of it you can't blind so you just have to vanish and get away um and then you just do the same thing over and over again it, it's so simple that it's very quick to grasp as soon as a road cheap shot you as a mage blink that that was it in classic that that was literally it every time a rogue cheap shot me in classic i blinked and then when i found a rogue that did just ambush me in classic i was like oh okay he actually understands okay he actually kind of understands what to do that i can just get out of the cheap shot there's no point in doing it so you may as well just do the raw damage that kind of thing so it's yeah one of them things one of them things the last one is raiding now I've got to show you this. This is this is crazy. So, raiding in classic is a stepping stone to where raiding is now in retail. In classic, all of the mechanics are very simplified. They're very simplified versions of the mechanics that we have today in WoW. I will say that they are the stepping stones to what has brought us to modern day uh, raiding mechanics. But if you just have a look at the difficulties in which there are, you have obviously normal, heroic and mythic in classic or in retail, sorry. And you just have the normal versions. You have 10 and 25 man in, uh, um, what is it? Wrath Classic. So I'm going to take the 25 man versions and the 10 man versions um, of these dungeons. Heroic isn't out yet. That comes with Trial of the Crusader. So we can't really give you that data yet. If you look at the raids, I'm going to do Dragonflight, Shadowlands, and Battle for Azeroth raids, the past three expansions. I'm going to tell you how long it took to clear Mythic Dragonflight. Okay? So, Razagath, the Storm Eater, in Vault of the Incarnates, the raid was released 13th of December. The first boss was downed at the 15th of December, and this is because... All of the raid tiers were released on the same day, so normal, heroic, and mythic. So the top guilds were farming normal and heroic first, and then two days later they went into mythic. So they killed four bosses in that first day in on the 15th. On the 17th, they killed two more. On the 18th, they killed one. And then a whole 10 days, well, I'll, I'll say uh, eight days, since when they entered uh, mythic, was Razageth killed. Eight days. Eight days of raiding. That's an entire reset, by the way. So that's two weeks worth of gear, pretty much. If you look at Shadowlands, you have December 15th is when Castle Nathria was released. About one, two, three, seven bosses died on that first day. One more, three days later. One more, three days later. And then Sidonathrius was killed on the 23rd of the month. So 15th, it was released. 23rd, he was killed. How many is that? Five, eight days. Again, another reset. Two full weeks of like gear, essentially. Sanctum of Domination, the second raid to come out in Shadowlands, released J July 13th. First day, you kill four bosses. One boss the next day. Two bosses the next day. One boss the next day. One boss the next day. And then the 20th of July is when Sylvanas died. That's a whole week after. Again, you, you see where I'm going with this. 
Sepulchre of the first ones, the last raid to be released, the last raid to be released in uh, Shadowlands, March 8th. Remember that date, March 8th. So we get to, what's a week later? March 15th. It, the last boss still isn't dead. A week later. Okay, surely he's dead. March 23rd. No, he's, he's still not dead. The final raid boss of the expansion is not dead. Two weeks later. The 26th of March is when he died. 18 days later. How crazy is that? 18 days. You get two full resets. So three lots of gear in that time. That's crazy. And this is not just like one guild progressing it. This is the world's first. So this is like every single guild or a lot of guilds are going for this world first race. This is the very first kill that was that happened on the jailer in the last raid of um what is it Shadowlands I already forgot the expansion. Compare this to the raid history of Classic. Classic was released released 26th of August on the 1st of September Anixia died. How many days are in August? How many days? How many days? Uh, Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. 31. So, August 26th. When was it? When was the global release? I think it was late August 26th. I'm going to give them the extra day anyway. So, August 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st, and the 1st. Seven days. It took them seven days to kill Anixia. And this isn't progressing Anixia. This is leveling from level 1 to 60, getting enough gear to go into Anixia to kill her. And this is 40 people who needed to level to do this. So they did their entire leveling experience and killed the very first raid boss of the expansion or of WoW Classic in a week. Yeah, it's crazy. Molten Core, again, was released 26th of August 2019, the same week uh, Wrath or Wild Classic was released. Now, the first kill on Ragnaros came on the 1st of September 2019. Again, seven days, the same day Anixia died. Even then, Molten Core, you had you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight bosses dead. You had all of the bosses dead before uh, September. So literally five days after. The only reason they had to wait was so that people could do quests outside the raid in order to get to get douses to summon the next boss. Because you literally couldn't continue. That is the whole reason they had to stop there. Otherwise, they would have killed it on the 31st. Like, it's absolutely mental. Blackwing Lair. Now, this is a few months after the release of Classic. So everyone's already dinged. Everyone's already 60. They've got their raid groups. They're already farming Molten Core and Nixia. That's fine. Blackwing Lair. Released February 12th. 2020. Nefarian was killed February 12th, 2020. The exact same day. And I remember looking at this and it took them about two hours to clear the entire instance. Two hours. From when it was released, two hours to clear clear the entire thing. That's how simple it is. Now, you can obviously make the case of, oh, these raids have been out for years and, you know, people already knew the, like, um, fights and how to play around it. Okay, that's fine. But it shows just how simplistic Classic is. Because if you apply that logic to raids, you can apply that logic to quests. Like, oh, this is very simple. Like, you summon a dragon and you kill it. Or you kill Moladim. Like, who's running around Duskwood as a 31 Elite. That's fine. There's game mechanics to manipulate the NPCs in Classic, such as jumping over a fence. 
because they can't run through fences npcs they run around it so you can constantly just slowly kill him that method so if you're going to use that oh it's been out for years you can use that excuse for quests or dungeons there's no reason why you should be wiping in dungeons then is there in classic because they've been out for years right so it's one of them things again temple of Ankaraj released august 4th killed august 4th all of the bosses Nax ramus one of the hardest dungeons or raids sorry to have ever been introduced and seen by like very few people in classic themselves very few Released December 3rd, 2020. Kel'Thuzad killed 3rd of the 12th, 2020. It is so ridiculous how quickly stuff was killed. And you might think, oh, okay, this is just classic. You know, it's nothing crazy. Okay, listen to this. This, Oh my God, listen to this. Burning Crusade released June 1st, 2021. June 1st, yeah? Gruul's Lair was one of the first raids, as well as Magtheridon's Lair and Karazhan. All of these were released from, like, the get-go of Burning Crusade. Gruul's Lair cleared on the 2nd of June, one day after Burning Crusade's release. Magtheridon's Lair cleared 2nd of June, one day after the release. Karazhan cleared 2nd of June after the release. All of it cleared within a day of the expansion release. Within a day. Like, how crazy is it? If if Blizzard brought out a raid currently in retail and it was cleared that quickly by Mythic World First Raiders, like a day, it wouldn't take a day, Blizzard would be scolded for that. Because it's not entertaining, it's not good enough, it's nowhere near hard enough, that kind of thing. But, you know, I have to give props to Blizzard in all, in all honesty for this. Because they do make retail raids kind of perfect, like, lengthwise. It's not too long, not too short. It's... Uh, Sepulchre of the first ones was kind of long. That took a couple weeks. I'm pretty sure one of the guilds did bow out. I think it was... It wasn't Method, it was the other one. Oh my god. L- Liquid? I think it was Liquid. I think they did give up the day before it was uh, killed by Method. But yeah, all of these have been just absolutely decimated. Serpent Shrine Cavern. 16th it was released. 16th of September. 16th of September it was killed. Tempest Keep. 16th of September. Again, same day it was killed. Mount Hyjal. 27th of uh, July. Uh, Jan, 27th of Jan, it was killed. Black Temple, 27th. Ah, in fairness. In fairness, this one did take a day to clear. Is there a reason for this? Is there a gore fiend? No, I, it took a day to clear. That's fair enough. Black Temple did take a day. 28th of Jan. Well done. Okay, they did it. Somewhere Plateau. One of, and... Uh, I cannot stress this enough. This was one of the hardest raids, apparently, that people have ever done, like, in the game. And yet, it was cleared the same day. 12th of May, 2022. It's just... Yeah. It's one of them things, man. That's why I think Classic is easier than Retail. The knowledge is there for, obviously, years and years, which... Is applied to dungeons, leveling, PvP, raiding. It's applied to everything, essentially. And uh, I think if you were to play retail and then go to classic, you would not feel out of your depth. Whereas if you play classic and go to retail, you would feel out of your depth in any of these elements. Leveling, maybe not so much because both of them are very simple. In dungeons, you might get a bit lost, but it is very simple as well. But in PvP, you would be completely lost. In raiding, I think you would be so lost it's unreal. I I just enjoy watching raiding for the fun of it. But doing raiding, I I can't do f- to save my life. I find it so annoying. Um, because all I want to do is just punch essentially. Um, but yeah, essentially, you would be lost if you went from raiding in classic to raiding in retail. But again, that's just because the mechanics that you know in classic 
are very simplified versions of the mechanics that are in retail. It's just move from fire. Like, oh, but this fire spreads to players who are too close to each other, so you've got to also be, like, 10 yards away from each other, that kind of thing. But, you know, it's it's kind of a hot take, but at the same time, it isn't, because I think this consensus is kind of shared. Again, um, classic players can be just as good as retail players, and vice versa, but I think, overall, retail has the highest skill ceiling compared to classic but that's just my opinion. Again, just my opinion. Thank you all very much for listening to this episode. Do check out the Twitch as well as Patreon. It's all down below. Please check it out. It would mean so much if you supported the show like more. And uh, yeah, once again, thank you all very much for listening. And go with Valor, friend. Goodbye all.